Good morning. Welcome to the Northwest Campus of the Calvary Community Church and Glendale's second annual induction ceremony for high school students entering the United States Armed Forces. My name is Jeff Turney, Chairman of the Glendale Chamber of Commerce Military and Veterans Affairs Committee. All of us from the organizing committee would like to extend a special welcome to the families and friends of, who are here to take part in a special, special occasion. Speaking of special occasions, I don't get to do this very often. It is my honor to serve as your MC tonight for this season, or this, today's event. As a 21-year veteran of the United States Air Force, I want to personally thank you for your commitment to join our armed forces. Please stand for the posting of the colors by the Civil Air Patrol 388th Squadron. Remain standing for the national anthem by the sounds of the Southwest Singers Community Choir and the invocation given by Pastor Mark Martin.
please uh, bow your heads. I'll just use this one. Sorry. Please uh, bow your heads as uh, we pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you for the liberty we have to gather for an occasion like this and for the millions of men and women who served our country and even given their lives to protect our freedom. We thank you this morning for the opportunity to dedicate time to honor a group of outstanding young men and women who are entering into the service of our country. They're about to become a part of a unique group of people who pledged their lives to protect and defend our nation against every kind of aggression in an unpredictable world. You know them, and you know them by name, you love them, and we ask that every step they take will be guided by you. Please protect them spiritually, emotionally, and physically as they serve our country, guarding and guiding them wherever that service may take them in this world. We ask you to give their parents and other loved ones and friends courage as they See their sons and daughters take this major step in their lives. May your peace guard their hearts and minds. We thank you now for this time. We thank you again in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen.
You may be seated. You may be seated. Thank you, Matt Deller and our choir for bringing, for being here this morning to, for this event to support this prestigious, prestigious event. We have a number of public officials and dignitaries in the audience I would like to introduce. From the city of Glendale, Mayor Jerry Wires. Vice Mayor Lauren Tomachoff. <laughs> Council Member Ian Hugh. <laughs> Maria Bruner, Chair of the Glendale Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> and Robert Height, President and CEO of the Glendale Chamber. Next is my great privilege to introduce the Honorable Jerry Wires, Mayor of the City of Glendale. Isn't this cool? Good morning, everyone. I'm uh, so incredibly happy to be with you this, uh, this morning in uh, what we're now calling our second annual induction ceremony. Uh, just over a year ago, I had an idea that was uh, brought to me and I in turn brought it to the Glendale Chamber of Military Affairs and Veterans Committee. And I'll explain how we came up with the idea in just a little bit. Uh, but after various discussions, uh, it was decided that the committee would take this project on. And uh, I think very quickly, we all understood its importance. Uh, what we didn't know was the impact that this was gonna make, not just in the lives of these recruits, but in all of our lives. While planning last year's ceremony, we found out about a, a very similar event uh, called our Community Salutes, and that was being held in Voorhees, New Jersey. Uh, Sergeant Turney and myself uh, wanted to see how they did their event. So following our inaugural event last year, uh, we flew up to New Jersey and uh, it was incredibly humbling to hear all the compliments from people on the opposite side of this country who had heard about our event. Uh, we had uh, accomplished, what we had accomplished actually went uh, well beyond uh, thanking our recruits. And uh, that's exactly uh, the very reason what we were hoping to accomplish uh, uh, in this very room just exactly today, a year ago. Uh, today is special. It's extremely special. Uh, today's the day when the Glendale Chamber of Commerce Military and Veterans Affairs Committee, along with folks in our city, have come together as a community for the very purpose of saying thank you. Thank you for your decision to serve in the United States Armed Forces. The high school students from the Glendale area seated in this sanctuary are part of 1% who have made the choice to stand watch in the front line to protect our freedoms. And for that very reason, we're here today to honor their courageous decision. I wanna tell the young men and women who are enlisted, enlisting in, that, in this decision uh, without, without a doubt is gonna be the best decision that you have made in your life to date. Some of you, if not most of you, is gonna go on, you're gonna become married, you'll have children, and uh, those will definitely be momentous occasions, no doubt. But this decision that you're making right now, today, has set your entire life on a career path with literally unlimited opportunities. You might be sent to a foreign country representing the United States. Who knows, you might possibly save someone's life. You might even earn a master's degree courtesy of Uncle Sam. But one thing for sure, you will encounter challenges. There's no doubt about that. Now, some of you might not know that what a challenge coin is and, uh, or the understanding of the meaning, so I'm going to share that with you. Uh, and I'm holding one in my hand. Challenge coins are especially popular within the military, but they're also used by several civilians in some membership organizations. And the history of the challenge coin is fascinating. And for the military, the, the tradition dates back at least until World War I. Uh, and usually a commander or someone uh, pretty high up in the command chain 
would present one to recognize some sort of special achievement. It would be possibly for courage, maybe for showing leadership, honesty, or anything that recognizes the recipient as exceptional, okay? Oftentimes, you can't give someone an increase in pay or a promotion in rank, so the challenge coin is a very special recognition for something extraordinary. This is a challenge coin. It's created by myself. On the obverse, it, you'll see it says, from the office of the mayor in the Glendale Chamber of Commerce, Veterans Affairs Committee. You'll see the, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Along with that, you'll see the American flag on it. Uh, but I think probably most important of all on this coin is it says the first to say thank you. On the opposite side to reverse, you'll see the five branches of the military in the words, for your selfless service to the United States of America. Each one of you recruits is going to receive a coin and a certificate of appreciation from my office today. Now, you need to keep the coin with you at all times because you never know when you might be challenged. This is the challenge part. If someone pulls their coin out of their pocket, slaps it down on the counter, if you don't have yours with you, you're going to have to buy them whatever they're drinking. <laughs> okay? I happen to drink Diet Coke. <laughs> so if I produce my coin and someone can't produce theirs, I'm getting a free Diet Coke. But just the opposite. If I pull it out, pop it on the counter, and you go, gotcha, Mayor. You pop yours out. I got to buy you whatever your drink is. And that works both directions. You can challenge me if you think I don't have mine with me. Okay, there's an entire committee of volunteers from this community, businesses and organizations that's come together to make this event a reality. And we're all here for the same reason, to thank you for the decision you made to protect and serve our country. But I think as important, we also want to thank the families, the moms and the dads and the aunts and uncles and siblings, the grandmas and grandpas. Uh, make sure that they understand all you have to do is just look around this room. Look at this entire community of people that are here to support these young people and the decision they made and to give you support when you start having those doubts once they're gone. Uh, you might be wondering how this event came to be. It actually started with some comments made by two fathers. And this is something that actually upset me when I heard this, but I'll tell you the story. There was Two fathers at a high school graduation, and one of the fathers was bragging, and, and really he had the right to brag, bragging to this other father about all these accomplishments his son has done, and, and he's got his chest puffed out so much that the buttons are popping off his shirt. He's so proud of his son, and he said, my son's going to, to Stanford, and he's got a full ride scholarship. And he looks at the other father and he said, so I know your son's graduating. What, what's your son going to do when he gets out? And the other father very, very proudly says, my son's going in the Army. And the first father said, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Folks, I got so upset. I would use the word that I was thinking, but I'm in a church and I don't want to be struck dead. <laughs> but it really, really upset me. I mean, very, very much upset me. And that was told to me by a general. And the general also told me that the challenge that our country's facing right now, getting young people that are intelligent, that are physically fit, that don't have baggage, that haven't had problems with the law, that have a good moral compass, not a lot of you out there. You know, of 100% of the high school students graduating, less than 30% actually can even qualify to go into the military. And of that 30%, a very, very small handful of them make, make that decision. And uh, to me, you have no idea how much you've earned my respect. Uh, to each and every one of the family members here today, your son, your daughter, your niece, your nephew, maybe even your grandchild, made that decision to join a much, much larger family. This new family is, a unique, is, is unique and will always be there for you from this day forward. Moms and dads, I know you're very proud of them, as all of us are. I also know that along with that pride comes the anxiety about what's to come. I can assure you they're in the best hands and will always be given the tools, the equipment, and the education necessary to succeed. We're all here to support you. And finally, I want to acknowledge all of our veterans 
who are with us here today. Gentlemen, ladies, if you're a veteran, prior serving or currently serving, if you'd stand up and be recognized, please. With the house lights down, it, uh, it's hard to see, but uh, there's an awful lot here. We appreciate the sacrifices that you've made to our country. We've had many veterans who have worked hand in hand with us on this very event, not because I'd asked them to, but because they've actually been in your shoes. In fact, many of them have said to me, man, I wished somebody would have done something like that for me when I decided to enlist. Uh, again, let's give all of our currently serving and former serving uh, a huge applause, if you would, please. I'd also like to thank our Veterans Affairs Committee, Pastor Mark Martin, Calvary Community Church for allowing us to be here, all of our sponsors, our local military recruiting officers uh, for coming together to make this event possible. So... Getting close to the end here, it was Martin Luther King who said, on some position, cowardice asked the question, is it expedient? And then expedience comes along and asks the question, is it politic? Vanity asks the question, is it popular? Conscious asks the question, is it right? There comes a time when one must take the position that it's neither safe nor politic, politic, nor popular, but he must do it because his conscience tells him it's right. Look around you. Today you're doing the right thing. To the recruits in the audience today, let me close my remarks with this. You're standing on the shoulders of every veteran that you've seen stand up just a minute ago. You're standing on their shoulders. It's your job now to carry that baton. Each generation has their future on their hands, you now have the opportunity to have a significant part in shaping our country in this critical time in history. You will encounter challenges, no doubt. You will find danger, and you will face fear. But whatever you wind up doing, wherever you wind up going, I hope you remember this day today. I hope you remember that one simple truth that your community appreciates you, and we have your back. And from the bottom of our hearts, we thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We were sitting in the back And we could barely see When he swung that baseball bat And hit the ball to me I gave it to my son As he raised up his head He said, I think he's my hero Then I looked at him and said Boy, you gotta watch who you call hero. A hero's not just any kind of name. A heroes risk their lives for our freedom. So you and I can watch this baseball game. I could tell his mind was racing as he sat there That what I said was really sinking in Now I think he understands the meaning And I won't have to tell him again Oh, you gotta watch who you call
call hero. Hero's not just any kind of name. Heroes risk their lives for our freedom. So you and I can live here just the same. Years have passed, my son's across the water. He's fighting for our country on this day. God, please let him know that he's my hero. And I don't call just anyone that name. Cause you know you gotta watch you call hero the Hero's not just any kind of name Heroes give their lives for our freedom So you and I can live here just the same No, you gotta watch who you call hero. Wow, did you feel those words reach just deep into your soul? If that didn't move you, I don't know what will. A special thanks goes out to Command Chief Kaiwakowski from Luke Air Force Base, who really wanted to be here today, but couldn't be for unforeseen circumstances. I'm sure he's watching the live feed we have established on Calvary's website, so please join me in thanking him with your applause. While having the chief here in person would have made heroes even more powerful, we are honored to show his video and his unbelievable talent. It shows that once you leave the service, you probably have another career. We never know when the hero within us will emerge. Every one of you inductees and everyone in this room has that special status buried deep within them. I also know you will get the opportunity to meet people in your life who will become your hero. Strive to become a hero to someone every day, and remember, you may never know that you are their hero. Officer Jesus Cordova lost his life in Nogales yesterday. He's a hero. This event was put together by a group of community volunteers who serve the Military and Veterans Affairs Committee. I would like to thank all of the members of the Chamber of Commerce's Military and Veterans Affairs Committee and the representatives from the mayor's office to please stand. I can't see you, so. You beat me to it. I was going to say, let's give him a round of applause. I would also like to thank the following supporters who have given their valuable time, money, or resources to make this event possible. The Calvary Community Church, provided the facilities and the programs today. The Sounds of the Southwest Singers Community Choir, unbelievably talented. The Marine Corps League Old Breed Detachment 767, Alpha Graphics, Sanderson Ford, excuse me, Shane's Rib Shack, Ideal Insurance Agency, the Disabled American Veterans Auxiliary. Let's give them all a round of applause for their support. Now it's time to recognize our future service members. The inductees will be called up by their respective branch of service. Please hold your applause until all the inductees have crossed the stage for each branch. 
We will have a photographer that will be taking professional pictures up here in the front, and those will be available online at the Glendale Chamber of Commerce's website, and that's going to be at www.glendaleazchamber.org, and just click on the Military and Veterans Affairs link. This address will be on screen at the end of the ceremony so you can take pictures of it and take it with you so you don't have to worry about it right now. Therefore, that we, we ask you that you remain seated so we can get the proper pictures. I would, allow, I would now like to introduce Lieutenant Colonel David Klukey, the commanding officer of the United States Army Phoenix Recruiting Battalion. Morning. Oh, he wasn't kidding. So if it looks like I'm looking at you, I'm really not. I can't see anything. Good morning, Mayor Wires. Distinguished guests, families, friends, and soon to be graduating high school seniors, other distinguished guests, retirees, and veterans. My name is Lieutenant Colonel Dave Klukey. I am the commander of the U.S. Army Phoenix Recruiting Battalion. It's my distinct honor and privilege to join you on this momentous occasion for the second annual Glendale induction ceremony. Events like this are crucial as the Army and our military need support from communities and schools to educate young Americans on the many opportunities available through military service. It's my great honor to recognize our 60 future soldiers out there who are assembled in front of us here today. Future soldiers, you, your families, and your friends should be proud of all you have accomplished, and more importantly, for what, you about, for what you are about to embark upon as you join the U.S. Army team. Before I address our future service members in attendance, I would like to briefly provide perspective to how exceptional it truly is to meet the requirements for military service while illuminating the challenges our, our recruiters as well as our senior military leaders face on a daily basis. Today, more than 70% of our youth do not meet the bare minimum requirements for military service. For those not qualified, obesity accounts for 31% of the disqualifications, and low aptitude accounts for about 9.5%. The rest do not meet the moral standards. When I was in high school and college in the 1990s, 40% of our youth between the ages of 16 and 24 had a parent who had served in the military. Today, that number has fallen to 16%, and it is anticipated that there will be a 35% decline in the veteran population over the next 30 years. Currently, less than 1% of the U.S. population serves, and less than 7% have served. Currently, more than 50% of young adults ages 17 to 35 readily admit to having little to no knowledge about military service. This ever-growing disconnect is alarming. And because of this, much of today's youth are largely unaware of the over 180 different career choices and numerous educational opportunities provided by the Army and the many similar educational opportunities and occupations provided by the Marines, Navy, Air Force, and Coast Guard. Our youth deserve the opportunity to make an informed decision regarding their future. Fortunately, in this room, I see over 120 high school seniors who are qualified and eager to serve their country. I see 60 future Army soldiers enlisting in 30 unique military occupational specialties jobs out of our Army's inventory of over 150 jobs. I see 60 extraordinary opportunities to grow as an individual, a soldier, and a leader. Your decision to serve your country is as imperative as it is important. Every single one of you has, evaluate, has been evaluated on a whole person concept. Each of you has demonstrated the ability to meet the cognitive, physical, and social requirements of training and have demonstrated the commitment necessary to succeed. All of you have worked incredibly hard to get to this point, knowing full well the challenges that lie ahead. Let me be the first to tell you, second actually, the mayor got that one. These challenges are worth facing and will shape you and your character as you grow into becoming the future leaders of our country. You will mature as individuals 
and as members of the greatest military in the world. Take pride in knowing your individual contributions will help shape the force of tomorrow. You should find comfort and great pride in knowing that for the rest of your lives, you will be part of the small percentage of our U.S. population who served. You will be veterans. What does it mean to be a veteran? In addition to the fact that you're more likely to vote, volunteer, and be involved in support of your communities, there are five characteristics of veterans that you should strive to embody and that your military training and experience will reinforce. Veterans can learn anything on the fly. This is number one. Situations, resource limitations, and some environments and time constraints either imposed by the school, training event, or mission make veterans resourceful. In many cases, you will be immersed in controlled training environments where you may be sleep deprived, physically exhausted, and even hungry. Yet, you will still need to study course materials, pass your test standard, or complete the mission. Because of this, you will develop the capability to learn things quickly. Number two, punctuality. It's simple. If you're not 15 minutes early, you're late. People that have never served in the military have likely never been corrected in a proper military fashion for not being prompt. All of you future service members will soon learn firsthand what I mean by this in your respective basic training courses. Additionally, veterans understand how valuable our supervisor's time is and do everything in our power not to waste it. Which brings me to number three, courtesy to superior officers. No one knows about chain of command the way a veteran does. Even if we don't agree with what you have to say or the task that has been given to us, we will execute it without question. Number four, loyalty. If you give a veteran a chance while giving them respect for what they have done, you will quickly or likely have a lifelong ally. Understand that when there was work to be done for our nation, less than half of 1% of the population said, I will go. This ideology does not stop when that uniform is hung up. This is an ethos that is applied to family, work, friends, and life. And number five, work ethic. A veteran is someone who will shoulder more than their share of the task, 100%, and then some. They are not unaccustomed to 15 to 18 hour work days and sometimes bad food. An army cook would beg otherwise. When a task needs to be done, it gets done. If not, there is an understanding of immediate consequence. So, I challenge you to step up to the occasion, put your best foot forward, and serve our nation selflessly. And always remember, it's not about the individual. It is about each and every individual's contribution to the team effort. As you move on and complete your training and report to your first unit, I am confident each and every one of you will thrive and continue to prove your excellence as members of the world's greatest military force. And in the words of our 26th president, Theodore Roosevelt, we must dare to be great and we must realize that greatness is the fruit of toil and sacrifice and high courage. Each of you has decided to take that first step. Thank you. Captain Eugene Lee will be announcing the name of our future recruits for the Army this evening. Mayor, sir, would you like to come on the stage to shake the hands of the future soldiers as they come across? All right, future soldiers, row one, please stand. The following high school seniors have made the commitment to serve the country in the United States Army. Albu Sharif Amir.
Boyd, Chrysinthia. Brown, Alexander. Brown, Dakota. Bromley, Thomas. Byers, Diamond. Candia, Islas, Jacqueline. Carta, Hector. Chacon, Sonia. Contreras, Alex. Dalbic, Brandon. Della Torre, Samantha. Enriquez, Renee. Espinoza, Ramon. Flores Yorkes, Roman. Gonzalez, Nicholas. Gara, Anthony. Girton, Zachary. Heilman, Brock. Horsky, Nicholas. Hyatt, Charity. Jones, Titus. Kenny, Justin. Lair, Isaiah. McClure, Austin. McPherson, Michael. Merriman, Brianna. Miskes Giovanna. Mercia Duarte Sebastian. Mario Josue.
Nasser Osman. Nava Cassandra. Neely Tamia. Ashin Candon. Peterson Tyler. Portillo Stephanie. Prowell Patrick. Trevino Gonzalez Natan. Reeves Logan. Revered Ty. Roberts Marufo Daniel. Rodriguez Michael. Shaffron Nicholas. Smith Dalton. St. John Seth. Turner Demetrian. Produsco Nathaniel. Walter Smiley Michael. Watts Brianna. Williams Hunter. Williams Victoria. Zavalos Mir Dominic. That concludes our list of recruits entering the U.S. Army. Next, I'd like to introduce Major Scott Stewart, Commanding Officer, Marine Corps Recruiting Station, Phoenix. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Major Scott Stewart. I am the Commanding Officer for Recruiting Station, Phoenix, and I'm honored to be here today to represent the Marines of Recruiting Station, Phoenix. Uh, if any of you have any uh, young men or women that uh, you know that aren't in attendance today, those Good-looking young men in the white pants over there would love to talk to you about some uh, future opportunities. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank the mayor, uh, the city of Glendale, and all those who have made this event possible today. I can't think of a better way to spend this beautiful Saturday uh, than to recognize these exceptional young men and women who are selflessly uh, volunteering to support and defend the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, 
and the liberties in which we enjoy. Since the creation of the Marine Corps on November 10, 1775, the Marine Corps has remained a force in readiness, prepared to answer the nation's call. The young men and women here today have answered that call. It was once asked why the Marines are so successful. The answer to that is that we find young men and women who already hold our core values of honor, courage, and commitment. And we build upon that foundation. I'd like to thank the parents and the families in attendance today for creating such a firm foundation and entrusting your young men and women uh, into our care. The young men and women here today have volunteered to serve at a time where volunteering is not necessarily one of the most popular things to do. They are going to be the future of the greatest military on earth, and they are the future of our nation. As all of you go forward with your military careers, may you be blessed with honor, courage, strength, and skill. May you have honor to represent our country, your family, your service, yourselves, and those who've gone before you. May you have the courage to do the right thing and to stand against evil. May you have the strength to endure the challenges that you will face. And may you have the skill to accomplish your assigned missions and to take care of those under your charge. I'm proud of all of you and your desire to serve. To the future Marines, remain Semper Fidelis and never say die. Thank you. The following high school seniors have made the commitment to serve their country, the United States Marine Corps. Asivas Gian. Ariano Pedro. Barrett Alexander. Bromley Jonathan. Carillo Daniel. Carter Marcus. Chavez David. Delkick Aiden. Diaz Brian. Felix Brandon. Farrell Tyler Taylor. Fritz Andrew. Garrett Jacklin. Herrera Joseph. Orta Cervantes Francisco. Bonnie Steele, Aaron. Rodriguez, Noe.
Ryan Matthew. Shirley Shane. Diego Sebastian. Watkins Hunter. That concludes our list of recruits entering the U.S. Marine Corps. Next, I'd like to introduce the Chief Master Sergeant, Ronnie Woods, the Chief Enlisted Manager, Air, Qual Air Control Squadron from the 56th Fighter Wing, Luke Air Force Base. Wow, this is a, a great ceremony. This is a really good ceremony, and I'm honored to be up here. I'm Chief Master Sergeant Ronnie Woods, the Chief Enlisted Manager at the Air Control Squadron at Luke Air Force Base. And on behalf of Brigadier General Brooke Leonard, the commander of Luke Air Force Base, and Chief Ma Master Sergeant Randy Kwiatkowski, he sung that song earlier. I want to give him a shout out. Our Command Chief, on behalf of them, I'm here to represent the United States Air Force. We didn't do that for everybody else. I feel kind of special right now. <laughs> Thank you to all the elected officials, the Military Veterans Affairs Committee, to the sounds of the Southwest Singers Community Choir, and everyone who played a part in uh, putting this event together. Thank you. Regardless of what component you serve in the military, you decided to join. You all did. And I want to take a few minutes to thank you. I will admit, when I was brainstorming my speech today, I had writer's block. I wanted to ensure I set the stage for all of the inductees today. Earlier this week, I was at, in New York City going to a leadership course. When I was at that leadership course, I was in the heart of New York City, and it took me about a mile to walk to the course. During that walk, I was greeted and told thank you by hundreds of great Americans who appreciate what we do. That's when it dawned on me what I wanted to articulate today. I have three goals. I want to articulate my appreciation for you all on a personal level. I want to communicate how elite you all are. And I want to, again, remind everyone that America's freedom is not free. First, I would like to say thank you to the family members supporting our inductees today. The fathers, mothers, grandparents, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, neighbors, and friends. Thank you for celebrating this moment. When I was 17, my parents signed the form that gave me permission to join the military. This support from them put me at ease and provided me the comfort I needed to serve my country. Joining the military is not an easy decision. And these inductees we are honoring will question it throughout their careers. But the support you all provide helps make their journey a little bit easier. The support shouldn't stop here with this ceremony. They're about to enter a culture and environment that demands their best. They will be far from home. They will need your guidance, encouragement, and prayer. We as military leaders provide you the vow that we will take care of your children like they are our own and ensure they are in an environment of dignity, dignity, respect, and honor to meet their successes and challenges. To the 100 and approximately 120 inductees today, defending America's freedom and being the best military in the world is a no-fail mission. I can't thank you enough for being part of the 1% of Americans who joined the military. America will be forever indebted to you for the choice you made. 
As I go back to that experience in downtown New York City, I could see the appreciation on everyone's face. My advice to you is to never take that appreciation for granted. Never take for granted how special you are. When I was in New York, I stood out like a sore thumb. Thousands of people surrounded me, but no one like us, because we are special. You are now part of an elite organization, the organization I like to call the great one percenters. To every Marine, Airman, Sailor, and Soldier, and Coast Guardsman in the room today, I want you to savor the moment before you leave for basic training because your lives would never be the same. As mentioned a few times today, approximately 70% of your peers don't meet the high demands, expectations, aptitude, attitude, moral compass, or dedication you all have. That's because you're the best of the best, and don't forget that. America enjoys its freedoms of today because of your sacrifices. I want to include by letting you know that freedom is not free. Your sacrifices will exceed that of a normal American. You will never identify with a hometown again because you will move every two to four years. You will meet great friends along your journey and they will move to different locations. You will miss family members' birthdays and milestones. You may even get married and have children and you will miss their birthdays and their milestones. And some of you may even pay the ultimate sacrifice to their country. Freedom is not free, but you stepped up to defend it. When I think of freedom, I refer to the starfish story written by Lauren Osley. The story states, one day a man was walking along a beach when he noticed a boy hurriedly picking up and gently throwing things into the ocean. Approaching the boy, he asked, young man, what are you doing? The boy replied, throwing starfish into the ocean. The surf is up and the tide is going out. If I don't throw them back, they'll die. The man laughed and said, don't you realize there are miles and miles of beach and hundreds of starfish? You can't make a difference. After listening politely, the boy bent down, picked up a starfish and threw it back into the ocean. Then smiling at the old man, he said, I made a difference for that one. To all the inductees out here, you're that little boy. You're making a difference for our country. We have a lots of problems and a lots of issues going on, but you are making a difference by defending our freedom. You are heroes, you're special, you're going through a lot right now, and you're gonna make a lot of sacrifices. And it's no worse none of us can say today again to thank you for what you're doing. Now let's induct some airmen. The following high school seniors have made their commitment to serve the country in the United States Air Force. Acosta Servando. Campbell Wendell. Casey Ethan. Saleya Amarisa. Siorna Matthew. Counts Wiley. Dagger Brandon. Dagger Cameron.
De La Rosa Ramona. Durkee Jonathan. Garcia Carlos. Lopez Daniel. Morales, Nathan. Navarre, Sunny. Reyes, Renisha. Riley Nicholas Rubash Jacob Smith Jonas Solano, Brianna. Stefano, Nate. Burkow, Andrew. Whitlatch, Charles. Olek, Draken. That concludes our list of recruits entering the U.S. Air Force. Next, I'd like to call to the podium Chief Petty Officer Dominic Giuliano of the United States Navy Recruiting Station. Hello, everybody. My name is Chief Petty Officer Dominic Giuliano. I'm the division leading Chief Petty Officer for Division 4, which encompasses the western part of the valley. So. Today, as we gather, I wanted to thank, well, first off, I want to thank the mayor of uh, Glendale. I want to thank the assembly. I am completely blown away by the energy in this room and inducting these 120 new future leaders uh, into the armed forces. So, um, first off, I, I always wanted to let people know that something that I was taught um, a long time ago when I was a junior sailor that success is gauged through a great deal of sacrifice. And what that means is what you do today will affect you tomorrow. And I would like to let you guys know that this is probably the most selfless thing that you're ever gonna en endure in your whole lives. Service to our nation, for people who will completely appreciate you. And uh, today, I wanna thank you from the bottom of my, hearts, my heart, <clears throat> Thank you for your service. You are the future leaders, future sailors, future airmen, future soldiers, future Marines. You're the future of our organization. Thank you very much. The following high school seniors have made the commitment to serve their country in the United States Navy. Angel Jadida.
Cabalet Carlos. Gibbs Trayvon. Gilmore Jonathan. Goheen Nicole. Hodge Malachi. Hurtado Edmund. Lessard, Sean. Ramos, Luis. Sanchez, William. Last but not least, Valverde Alejandro. That concludes our list of recruits entering the U.S. Navy. This year, there were no Glendale recruits entering the United States Coast Guard. Lieutenant Colonel Klukli will now administer the oath of enlistment to our future military members. Inductees, would you please stand? Okay. Future service members, raise your right hand or repeat after me. I state your name. Do solemnly swear to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the, and the orders of those officers, those officers appointed over me, appointed over me according, to regulation, according to regulation and the uniform code of military justice. And the uniform code of military justice. So, help so help me God. Congratulations. Congratulations. Hello, there we go. Congratulations. The city of Glendale, the chamber, and our enti entire community are proud of you and your decision to serve our country. Please everyone, let's give them a round of applause. Our next song is called Salute to the United States Armed Services. We're asking for a little help from some of our audience members. As the choir sings each branch's official song, we invite all members, active, veterans, and inductees to please stand together and join in.
you all so much. It's been such an honor to be here, Sounds of the Southwest Singers. I'm coming right up here because I want you all to understand what we're about to do. We're singing the song that will be with you throughout your lives as what you're doing today. It'll be with you forever. God bless America. If you don't know the lyrics, you're going to know them after today. All right? Here's what we're doing. We're singing the first part of God Bless America. I will come over here, and I will ask all of you to stand. Everyone in this room stand, and we will sing it together, the last verse, okay? Everybody with me? All right. Here we go. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing as we retire the colors and the official party departs. Retire the colors.
Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats for some final announcements. Inductees, the stoles you are wearing tonight are yours to keep, courtesy of the Military and Veterans Affairs Committee and several of our local businesses listed on the program. We invite you proudly to wear your stoles at your future ceremonies, such as your high school graduation. Again, all the photographs taken today will be posted at Glendale Chamber of Commerce's website, www.glendaleazchamber.org. Today's ceremony was recorded, and it will also be made available on YouTube. We will also make sure that it is linked to the Chamber's page under the Military and Veterans Affairs section. Again, new recruits, we thank you for your decision to join the United States Armed Forces. We look forward to seeing you return to Glendale one day as our future leaders. On your way out, please stop by and say hello to our official party who will be out in the atrium. There's a second set of flags outside the main entrance to the facility here for family selfies. Something I would never say in the past. <laughs> this concludes today's program. Thank you for attending. Now go out and become someone's hero. Thank you.